Grammar 012 Unit 1 Lesson 1 Using Infinitives By the end of Lesson 1 you will be able to identify the forms of infinitives. Recognize infinitives in sentences. Use infinitives to give reasons and use infinitives with adjectives. Infinitives To see To get To find What you're seeing here is to plus the verb. To see, to get, to find. And that's an infinitive. Read the following conversation and underline the infinitives. Thomas, are you ready for your trip to Puerto Rico? Roberto, yeah, kind of, but I still have a lot to do. I need to go shopping to get a new suitcase and I still have to go online to find a cheap flight. Thomas, is it easy to find bargains on the internet? Roberto, well it's not too hard. You have to do some research. Thomas, so where are you going exactly? Roberto, well first I'm going to San Juan to see my relatives and then we are all going someplace to go snorkeling. Thomas, that sounds exciting. Roberto, yeah, it's going to be fun. Please note that all of the underlined parts of sentences are infinitives. Look at the following sentences and underline the infinitives for reasons. Why are you going to Puerto Rico? I'm going to Puerto Rico to see my relatives. Why do you need to go shopping? I need to go shopping to get a suitcase. The last two examples are infinitives for reasons. It details why you are going to go shopping or why you're going to go to Puerto Rico. Why do you have to go online? I have to go online to find a flight. Another infinitive for reason. Note, infinitive for reasons, two plus verb, answer the questions beginning with why. It's easy to find bargains on the internet. What will I like you to do here? Well, I'd like you to underline the adjectives and infinitives. It's easy, this is an adjective, to find, this is infinitive, bargains on the internet. It's necessary, this is an adjective, to get, this is an infinitive, a visa. It's not hard to do, hard, adjective, to do, infinitive. Rule, it's plus adjective plus infinitive. Grammar 012 Unit 1 Lesson 2 Advice and Suggestions By the end of Unit 1 Lesson 2 you will be able to identify the modal verbs for advice and suggestions or use the modal verbs for advice and suggestions. Modal verbs should, could, need to. Let's read the following conversation between Jenny and her mother and underline should, could, and need to. I'll read it first. Jenny, maybe you should take some insect repellent. Oh, and take a flashlight and don't forget to pack some spare batteries. Why don't you take my jacket? It's a good idea to have something warm. Now you need to take a hat. You could borrow your dad's, but don't lose it. Oh, and Jenny, do you want to pack some other shoes? Jenny, I'm sorry, Mom. Did you say something? I can't hear you with the TV on. In the conversation, should, could, and need to are used for advice and suggestions. Use of should, could, and need to in sentences. What should I take? Should I take these shoes? You should take a hat. You shouldn't take an expensive camera. You could borrow your dad's hat. You need to have warm clothes. Please note that in all these sentences, should, could, and need to are used for advice and suggestion. Please take note of what I'm underlying. Grammar 012, Unit 2, Using Whose and Possessive Pronouns. 
By the end of Unit 2, you'll be able to identify whose and possessive pronouns in sentences, and use whose and possessive pronouns in sentences. Look at the following sentences and underline whose. Whose car is this? Whose book is this? Whose pens are these? Whose is used especially in questions when asking about what a person owns or which thing belongs to something. Rule. Whose plus noun plus the be verb, and remember, the be verb can be different, plus the pronoun. Whose car is this? It's mine. It's yours. It's his. It's hers. It's ours. Pause your screen and take a look at this. Whose book is this? Whose pens are these? They are mine. They are yours, his, hers, ours, and theirs. I want you to pause your screen and take a look at this before we move forward. Possessive pronouns. We have the personal pronoun I and the possessives of mine. You have you, both singular and plural. The possessive pronoun is yours. He, his, she, hers, it, its, we, ours, they, theirs, one, ones. And I'm going in the order of personal pronoun, possessive pronoun. These two columns match each other. Use possessive pronouns in place of a noun. Please pause your screen and take note of that. Rules for possessive pronouns. Use possessive pronouns in place of a noun. For example, whose book is this? It's mine. In this sentence, mine is used in place of a noun. And what's that noun? The noun is book. Don't use possessive pronouns before nouns. For example, it's yours books. It's book. Does that sound right? No, it doesn't. It's yours. So, don't use possessive pronouns before nouns. You don't want to sound like that. Grammar 012. Unit 3, Lesson 1. Using the simple past tense. By the end of Unit 3, Lesson 1, you'll be able to identify the forms of the simple past tense in a sentence and use the simple past tense in a sentence. Look at the following verbs and use them in the simple past affirmative and negative sentences. For example, eat. Affirmative. I ate breakfast. Negative. I didn't eat lunch. Play. They played mobile games. They didn't play football. We watched TV. We didn't watch DVDs. Use the simple past for a completed action in the past. The key word is action. Affirmative, negative. We have get up. Khalid got up late. He didn't get up early. Study. She studied Arabic. She didn't study the math. Negative. She didn't study math. Let's take a look at the rules for the simple past. Use the past form of the verb in the simple past tense. For example, in the affirmative, I ate breakfast, you ate breakfast, we ate breakfast, and they ate breakfast. Also, Ahmed and Khaled ate breakfast. Keep in mind that this is for the affirmative. Now, let's take a look at the rule. So, subject plus the past form of the object plus the object. Let's take a look at the negative. I didn't eat breakfast. The rule, subject plus didn't plus present form of the verb plus object. Contraction of did not is didn't. Please pause your screen and take a closer look at the contraction. Did not to didn't. The contraction is didn't. Grammar 012. Unit 3, Lesson 2. Using past continuous statements. By the end of the Unit 3, Lesson 2, you will be able to identify the forms of past continuous statements and use past continuous and simple and negative statements. 
Look at the following sentences and underline past continuous statements. I'll read them for you. I was playing football. She was reading a book. He was listening to the Quran. We were watching the TV. You were attending a lecture and they were studying a lecture. On the left side you have positive and on the right side you have negative. Please keep in mind that whatever is underlined is a past continuous statement. Negative. I wasn't playing tennis. She wasn't reading a newspaper. I wasn't listening to the news. We weren't watching a movie. You weren't attending a workshop and they weren't studying math. The rule for past continuous statements. Use the past form of the V verb and verb plus ing in past continuous statements. For example, I, she, he was playing football. You, we, they were playing football. Rule, subject, plus was or were, plus the verb, plus ing, plus the object. Now what is what was or were? This is the past form of the be verb. Negative, let's take a look at the negative. I wasn't playing football. She or he wasn't playing football. You, we, or they weren't playing football. The rule is subject plus was or were plus not plus the verb plus ing plus the object. Contraction of was not is wasn't. Of were not weren't. Grammar 012. Unit 4, Lesson 1. Using comparative adjectives. By the end of Unit 4, Lesson 1, you will be able to identify the form of comparative adjectives and use different forms of comparative adjectives. Let's take a look at some rules. We have two rules we're going to explain here and we'll also have two more I tell you about but let's begin at the top right here. For adjectives ending in a consonant plus Y remember a consonant is everything except a vowel change the Y to I and add ER. For example busy becomes busier. The second rule for most adjectives ending in a vowel plus consonant double the final consonant and add ER. For example big becomes bigger. Let's take a look at another list which gives you some of the examples of all the rules I just discussed. But please keep in mind that there are some exceptions and I'll get to that in a little bit. Big, bigger. Small, smaller. Quick, quicker. Slow, slower nice, nicer, easy, easier. Now the exceptions. Do not double the consonant for comparative adjectives in words ending in W. For example, slow became slower. For fun you use more before it in comparative adjectives. For example, more fun. Now the last rule is for most one syllable and some two syllable adjectives add ending in E, just add an R. Nice becomes nicer. Now let's take a look at the following adjectives. For adjectives of two or more syllables, use more or less plus the adjective as given above. Less is used, <coughs> less is used in comparative adjectives for the opposite of more. So let's just start for more. Personal, three syllables, right? More personal. What about the opposite? Less personal, that's right. Then can be used with adjectives to compare two nouns in the same sentence. For example, two people. Let's take a look. Khalid is better than Ahmed in English. Grammar 012. Grammar 012. Unit 4, Lesson 2. Using comparative adjectives with more, fewer, and less. By the end of Unit 4, Lesson 2, you'll be able to recognize more, fewer, and less to make comparisons with nouns and verbs and you'll be able to use more, fewer, and less to make comparisons with nouns and verbs. Look at the following sentences and underline more, fewer, and less. I get more calls than you. I get fewer calls than you. I spend more time on the phone. You spend less time on the phone. She talks more than he does. He talks less than she does. Can you guess what we're going to underline? Yeah, that's right. We're underlying anything with more, fewer, or less. In all of these sentences, more, fewer, or less 
more, fewer, and less are used to make comparisons with nouns and verbs. Rules for using more, fewer, and less to make comparisons with nouns. Use more, fewer, with countable nouns. This is something that you can count. It can also be plural, like chair, chairs. For example, I get more calls than you. I get fewer calls than you. In these sentences, call is a countable noun, and more and fewer are used. Use more or less with uncountable nouns. For example, I spend more time on the phone. You can't count that. You spend less time on the phone. In the above sentences, time is an uncountable noun, and more and less are used. Use more or less with verbs. For example, she talks more than he does. He talks less than she does. In the above sentences, talk is a verb and more and less are used. Use verb plus more or less plus than to make comparisons with the verb as given in the above examples. Please pause your screen. Take a look. Grammar 012, Unit 6, Lesson 1. Using future with will, may, and might. By the end of Unit 6, Lesson 1, you will be able to identify the future with will, may, and might in sentences, and use the future with will, may, and might in a sentence. Look at the following sentences and underline will, may, and might. Ahmed will be 35 in November. I may travel to America next summer. He might not be able to afford it. What do you think is going to be underlined here? Will, may, and might. Use will for simple facts or predictions about the future. For example, I'll be 45 in June. It won't be easy to find a job. I will, I'll, contraction. Will not, won't. Use may or might to show you are not 100% sure about the future. For example, I may travel to America next summer. He might not be able to afford it. Grammar 012. Unit 6, Lesson 2, Using the Present Continuous and Going to in the Future. By the end of Unit 6, Lesson 2, you will be able to recognize the future sentences while using the present continuous, and use future sentences with the present continuous and going to. Look at the following sentences and underline present continuous with going to. I'm going to Europe next year. I'm going to visit Paris. Let's take a look. I am going to Europe next year. Do you see what's underlined? I'm going to visit Paris. The above sentences are about the future, and going to is used to talk about plans or decisions already made. Writing 012. Unit 1. Writing a postcard. By the end of Unit 1, you will be able to identify the format of a postcard and write a postcard. Let's take a look at the format of a postcard. First, you want to have your stamp. You have a two section where you would address where the postcard is going to be sent. You have your greeting, dear, and you would say hi, hello. Here's where you would put the name of the person. You have the body. This includes your message. And you have your closing. In this example, it says see you. You also have the signature. This is where you would sign your name or the name of the sender would sign his name here. Going back to the address of a person you are sending a card to, it's very important that you fill out all of the required sections. Now let's take a look at the sample of a postcard. Imagine you are staying at a hotel. Write a postcard to a classmate about your stay. Let's see. Dear Ahmed, this is the greeting. Here's the body. I'm having a great time here in Abha. I'm staying in Abha Palace Hotel. The hotel is lovely. The food is cheap. It's a good place to stay. Tomorrow I'm going to see the Green Mountain. See you soon. And here's where you put your signature. Now, the address of a person you are sending a car to should include the name, the P.O. box, or the building number and street number, plus the city. Writing 012, Unit 2, Writing a Short Article. By the end of Unit 2, you'll be able to identify the format of a short article and write a short article. Let's take a look at the format of a short article. 
First you want to have a topic at the top center of the page. You have your introduction, your body, and your conclusion. Now, write a short article about the evening routine that you have. Before writing a short article, you want to take notes by answering the questions related to the topic of the article. I want you to think about possible answers to the following questions. What do you do in the evening? What do you do first? What do you do before you have dinner? Do you watch TV while you are eating? Do you do the dishes right after dinner? Do you have a snack before you go to bed? What's your bedtime routine? Now, task two. Here are some possible answers to the questions. What do you do in the evening? My evening routine is very busy. What do you do first? First, I offer mukra prayer in the evening. What do you do before you have dinner? I complete my homework before dinner. Do you watch TV while you are eating? I watch the news on TV while I am eating. Do you do the dishes right after dinner? I don't do the dishes, but my housemaid does it. Do you have a snack before you go to bed? I don't have a snack, but I have a lemon soda. What's your bedtime routine? I go to bed early. Now, task three. Use your answers to write a short article about the evening routines. The evening routines were discussed on the previous slides. You have your introduction, your body, and your conclusion. I would like you to post this in the appropriate place in Blackboard as indicated in announcements. Writing 012, Unit 3. Writing a letter to the newspaper column. By the end of Unit 3, you'll be able to identify the format of a letter to a newspaper column and write a letter to a newspaper column. Let's take a look at the format of a letter to a newspaper column. You have your heading and title, your opening paragraph, your body, and your conclusion. Now, when you write a letter to a newspaper column, it's usually about something good that happened to you recently in the example in our class. So in task one, before writing a letter to a newspaper column, think of a good thing that happened to you recently. Write some sentences about it. For example, I was walking to work last week. It started to rain. I didn't have an umbrella. I put a newspaper over my head and ran. I got to the corner. The light changed. I had to wait for a really long time. A young man came up to me. He offered to share his umbrella. He walked with me all the way to work. Task 2. Now use your notes to write a letter to a newspaper column. Remember you have your heading and title, your opening paragraph, your body, and your conclusion. I would like you to post this in the appropriate place as indicated in the announcement section of Blackboard. Writing 012, Unit 4. Writing a short article on the advantages and disadvantages of a means of communication. By the end of Unit 4, you'll be able to identify the format of a short article and write a short article on the advantages and disadvantages of a means of communication. For example, cell phones. Now, let's take a look at the format of a short article. You have your topic, your introduction, your body, and conclusion. Are you seeing a pattern here? Now, write a short article on the advantages and disadvantages of cell phones. Task 1. Before writing the short article, make a list of advantages and disadvantages of cell phones. Advantages of cell phones could be cell phones are useful. They're convenient. You can make a call from anywhere. The disadvantages. They're annoying. They ring during lectures and people talk in a loud voice. Note, arguments for something are called pros. These are the advantages. Now, arguments against something are usually called cons. Task 2. Use your notes to write a short article about the pros and cons of cell phones. The pros and cons of cell phones. This is your topic. You have your introduction, your body, 
and your conclusion. I would like you to post this in the appropriate place as indicated in the announcement section of Blackboard. Writing 012, Unit 5. Writing a fashion article describing the current look. By the end of Unit 5, you will be able to identify the format of an article and write a fashion article describing the current look. Now, the format of an article. We've been seeing a trend here in the previous units. You have your topic, your introduction, your body, and your conclusion. Now, let's get to it. Write a fashion article describing the current look. Task 1. Before writing the article, make notes of different ideas. For example, what clothes are in fashion today? What are the trendy colors? What shoes are everyone wearing? What accessories are popular? What do you like about today's look? And what don't you like? Let's take a look at the notes below. Describing new trends, for example, short hair is in style or fashionable. Long hair is out of style. Glasses are becoming popular. A sentence that you could start with is, it's fashionable for men to wear. A less formal expression would be, short hair is in, long hair is out. Big shoulder bags are the in thing right now. They're very trendy. Task 2. Now I'd like you to use your notes to write a fashion article describing the current look. If you must, go back to the previous slide and listen to it again. Please remember, you'll have your topic, your introduction, your body, and your conclusion. I would like you to post this in the appropriate place as indicated in the announcement section. Writing 012, Unit 6. Writing an article about how a prediction will make our lives better or worse. By the end of Unit 6, you will be able to identify the format of an article and write an article about how one of the predictions will make our lives better or worse. Let's take a look at the format of an article. And by now, through Units 1 through 5, you should have established the trend. You have a topic, an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. Now, I would like you to write an article about how one of the predictions will make our lives better or worse. Let's take a look at some examples. Before writing the article, think about the following prediction. Scientists predict that people will have smart refrigerators in the future. Scanners will read barcodes and food and complete the sentence. Now write reasons how this prediction can make our lives better or worse. Now some of these things have already happened. You should have a general idea. Here are some ideas. First, you won't need to. Second, you'll never. Next, scanners will. And finally, you'll be able to. Use these to get your sentences started. Task 2. Now use your reasons to write an article about how one of the predictions will make our lives better or worse. You have your topic, your introduction, your body, and your conclusion. I would like you to post this in the section indicated in the announcement section of Blackboard. Listening 012, Unit 1, Environmental Studies. By the end of Unit 1, you will be able to practice Practice the listening skill by listening to a lecture about city planning. Identify the main ideas in a lecture about city planning and indicate what people are talking about in a lecture about city planning. Distinguish the individual voices in the listening text. Unit 1 listening track, a lecture about city planning. Please click on this link found in your blackboard and listen to the track. After listening to the track, Please rejoin me. Now, here are some questions I'd like you to answer in the discussion forum. Listen to the lecture by clicking on this link or file as attached above. As you listen, number the topics in the order that they are discussed. So here are the topics. A. The characteristics of smart growth. B. The decline of the inner cities. C. The growth of the suburbs. And D. The role of city planners. Now, I want you to listen again to the lecture. For each item, choose the correct sentence ending according to the lecture. America's inner cities have been in a bad state for 
A. 30 to 50 years or B. About 100 years. Number two, inner cities declined because A. People moved to the suburbs or B. The downtown stores weren't of high quality. Number three, many towns are losing their cultural life because A. People aren't interested in culture or B. B. People don't want to go downtown at night. Number four. It's important to revitalize the inner cities because A. People want to live closer to their jobs or B. People don't like the suburbs. Number five. Diversity of use helps to revitalize a neighborhood because A. People can live near their jobs or B. It brings people to a neighborhood throughout the day. Number six. Housing diversity is a good thing because A. It attracts different age and income levels, or B, communities should provide affordable housing. Number seven, city planners now prefer to locate schools and stores, A, away from residential areas, or B, close to residential areas. Number eight, attractive outdoor spaces are good for a community because A, they encourage people to come out to the streets, or B, they make people feel better. Now please keep in mind, I want you to answer these questions located in the discussion board. Listening 012, Unit 2, Psychology. By the end of Unit 2, you'll be able to distinguish the main ideas from a radio program about the concept of flow, and state what people are talking about in the radio program about the concept of flow. Unit 2, Listening Trap. <clears throat> Unit 2 Listening Track, a radio program about the concept of flow. Please pause your screen, go to Blackboard, and pull up the soundtrack and listen to it. After you've listened to it, please join me. Now, all of the multiple choice questions I would like you to answer in the discussion board. Number 1. Flow is described by psychologists as a state of A. Optimal experience or B. Deep relaxation. Number two, a person can experience flow during A, one or two types of activities only, or B, many different activities. Number three, flow is A, the same as feeling happy, or B, different from feeling happy. Now, I want you to listen again and you know where to access it in Blackboard. Write T for true or F for false for each statement. I'll read the statements for you. Number one, the concept of flow was described by psychologists. True or false? Number two, the psychologist describes being a chef in a restaurant to explain flow. True or false? Number three, it is typical to lose a sense of time and to forget your problems when experiencing flow. True or false? Number four, both skill and challenge are required to experience flow. True or false? Number five, you can experience flow in both physical and non-physical activities. Number six, according to the speaker, watching TV is sometimes likely to produce flow. Number seven, reading is not a typical activity that produces flow. Remember, all of these questions are true or false. And number eight, it is possible to feel happy without experiencing flow. True or false? Please Put all of your true or false selections in the discussion board. Now, I want you to listen to the radio program again. After listening to it, write a blog stating what people are talking about in the radio program. You'll find the blog in your blackboard on the left-hand side. Listening 012, Unit 3, Food Science. By the end of Unit 3, you'll be able to identify the main ideas from a lecture about taste in food. Talk about the wisdom of the body theory and recognize the baby taste. Now, Unit 3 Listening Track, a lecture about taste in food. You know where to find this in your blackboard. We already discussed it in class. Please go to that portion, listen to the track, and then rejoin me. Now, the following multiple choice questions, I would like you to answer them in the discussion board. In the discussion board. I'll read them for you. Number one, according to the wisdom of the baby theory, we want certain food because we need nutrients. B, we like the taste. C, we need the nutrients and we like the taste. Number two, 
The wisdom of the baby theory doesn't fully explain our eating habits because A. Different people like different food. B. People have different ideas about nutrition. Or C. We often eat food low in nutrition and don't like food high in nutrition. Number three, babies prefer sweet drinks, A, about three days after they are born, B, on the day they are born, or C, on their first birthday. Number four, babies don't mind the pain of an injection as much as if, A, they have something to eat before the shot, B, they have some sugar before the shot, or C, they have some sugar after the shot. According to a recent study, children aged five to nine years old a. Like the flavor of citric acid. B. Can't taste citric acid. Or C. Dislike the flavor of citric acid. Number six. Blank don't usually like bitter flavors. A. Children. B. Pregnant women. C. Children and pregnant women. Number seven. A study showed that if a woman drank carrot juice when she was pregnant, her baby. A. Wouldn't like carrot flavored cereal. B. Would like carrot flavored cereal more than other babies. Or C. Would like carrot flavored cereal as much as other babies. Number 8. A study on cravings found that A. Women everywhere crave chocolate. B. Men and women in Egypt crave chocolate. Or C. There are cultural differences in who craves chocolate. Listening 012. Unit 4. Visual Art. By the end of Unit 4, you will be able to identify the main points in a radio interview about Aboriginal art. Illustrate the main ideas from a radio interview about Aboriginal art. And point out the major elements of Aboriginal art. Unit 4 Listening Track, Australian Aboriginal Art. Please access the file located in Blackboard. After listening, rejoin me. Listen to the interview about Australian Aboriginal art. As you listen, check the three main points that were made. Write your answer in the following discussion forum. Now, out of all of these options, you're only going to check the three main points that are made. I'll read all of them for you. <clears throat> a. Aboriginal art has lasted a long time. B. The Aboriginal people are the original native Australians. C. Aboriginal art is about the dream time. D. Aboriginal people didn't have a written language. E. The most important thing for the artists is doing the art, not keeping or selling it. And F. Some paintings sell for thousands of dollars. Now, listen to the interview again, located in Blackboard. As you listen, choose the correct answer for each item. And remember, I would like you to put this in the discussion forum. Number one, one reason that Aboriginal art is so popular is that A. It has lasted for thousands of years. B. It's a two-month program. Or C. It's a three-week program. Number two, the program includes A. Only memory exercises. B. Memory exercises and a special diet. Or E. Memory exercises, a special diet, physical activity, and stress-relieving exercises. Three. After the program, memory tests show that Michelle Rubin's memory was average for her age, B, equal to a 40-year-old person, or C, equal to a 20-year-old person. Number four, as a way to exercise her brain, Michelle Rubin now helps her children with A, math puzzles, B, their math homework, or C, their reading homework. Number five, Dr. Small's study showed that people who did the program had A, more, effic <coughs> more efficiency in the front of their brains, B, more efficiency in the back of their brains, or C, more efficiency in all parts of their brain. Number six, other scientists feel that A, the program definitely works, B, the program doesn't work, or C, the program might work, but there needs to be more research. Listening 012, Unit 5, Life Science. By the end of Unit 5, you will be able to identify the main ideas from an informational talk at a ranger station and describe the Condors program. Unit 5, Listening Track, 
informational talk at a ranger station. This is accessible in your blackboard. Please listen to the track and then rejoin me. Listen to a biologist talk about a program to save condors and reintroduce them in the wild. Number all of the topics in the order they are mentioned in the following discussion forum. I'll read all of the topics. A. Use of a global positioning system, known as GPS. B. Working together and socializing. C. Background and history. D. Raising baby condors. Read the questions and answer the ones you can, then listen to the lecture again. After you listen, answer the following questions in the discussion forum. Number one, when did the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service start their breeding program? Number two, what are the three regions mentioned where wild condors live now? Number three, what are the two points mentioned that make it difficult to attach the GPS units to condors? Number four, what is one thing biologists have learned as a result of using GPS? Number five, what didn't the baby condors learn in the early days of the program? Number six, what are the humans raising baby condors trained to do now? Number seven, how do condors learn how to find food? And number eight, what example does the speaker give to show that condors like to socialize? Listening 012, Unit 6, Social Studies. By the end of Unit 6, you will be able to distinguish the main ideas from a lecture about European and U.S. work habits. Discuss the European and U.S. work habits and identify the differences between European and U.S. work habits. Unit 6 Listening Track, a lecture about European and U.S. work habits. Please find this in Blackboard. After listening, rejoin me. Listen to the lecture. As you listen, write T for true or F for false for each item in the following discussion forum. I'll read them for you, but make sure that you mark them either true or false in the discussion forum. Number one, the difference in work habits between the United States and Europe is getting smaller. True or false? Number two, Americans introduced both the two-week vacation and the 40-hour work week. True or false? Number three, in the past, Americans had more leisure time than Europeans did. True or false? Number four, Americans have more laws about leisure time. True or false? Number five, Workers in Britain work longer hours than workers in other European countries. True or false? Number six. All employees in the United States receive two weeks paid vacation. True or false? Number seven. Some workers in the United States do not use the vacation time that they have. True or false? And number eight. American workers have more job security. True or false? Now, I would like you to prepare a wiki on the European and U.S. work habits, indicating differences between the European and U.S. work habits. You can take help from the listening track by listening to it multiple times and paraphrasing some of the things you've heard. Please post this in the wiki indicated in